this morning it's my my blessed privilege as we're worshiping still in this um, to bring a, an offering message and uh, I'm telling you what these are some of the dearest friends in our life Clifton and Jerry Coulter uh, have uh, been friends of ours for many many years and we love them dearly and they have imparted into us they have changed our lives. Uh, we haven't, uh, we've done kids stuff together. <laughs> we've done, we've done ministry together. We've done all kinds of stuff together. And I just want you to know that uh, my little, another one of my little sisters here is going to bring a word in due season this morning for offering. And yeah, yeah you're, you're welcome to sit down. But uh, Jerry Coulter, you are my friend, and I love you dearly. I love you dearly. Thank you are my friend. You want this or lapel? Yeah. No, this is good. Can I interrupt you just for a second? <laughs> you know, we were worshiping. I saw a lady come in. Uh, would you mind standing up? And I saw her walk in with this baby nestled in right next to her heart. And I felt like God said, you're the baby that's nestled into God's heart. Wow. And I felt like you're that baby, Jerry. God has got you. <laughs> I was composed. <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> Thank you, everyone who's been talking to me this morning. <sighs> Last time I stood here, guess who was standing beside me? <laughs> I'm going to give a scripture this morning for offering that I guarantee you've never heard it given for an offering. <laughs> but I'm different. Over in, uh, well, 2 Timothy <clears throat> was the last book that Paul ever wrote. He was about to be martyred. And when I realized this years ago, I used to think, now, if I had one more letter to write, you know, to my family, to my friends, what would I say? And Paul said what he wanted to say. This was his last message <clears throat> to the church. So in chapter 4, I got a whole message on this. I taught all over the world. We were just getting ready to go to England and Scotland, Ireland, different places. And I had just learned some of these things and I taught it everywhere I went. But I don't get to teach you all that today. Just one verse. <laughs> but Paul, he said, uh, I'm going to go to 17, but I'll read 16 first. <clears throat> At my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. You know, at one point he said he lost all of Asia. Clifton used to say, I've lost a lot of people, and I've lost, but I've never lost the whole continent. <laughs> like Paul. And then verse 17, <coughs> but the Lord stood with me. See, he lost everybody. No one stood with him, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message, come on people, might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, and then he threw this in, and I just, I don't really understand this, but he says, and I was delivered out of the mouth of a lion. <laughs> in case you wonder. But see, it's about the message. The reason that we give, I'm going to have to have a Kleenex. The reason that we give is because of the message. It should be worth everything in your billfold today. Amen. I ain't getting many amens. That's okay. The message that we preach is the message that, message that needs to be preached all around the world. The message that God loves people. Everywhere we've ever been, the problem is people do not know that. Now they'll say, do you think God loves you? And they'll say, well, yes. But they don't. You can talk to them for five minutes and figure out, no, they don't. So the biggest help that we can be to them is to teach them grace, 
Teach them unconditional love. Teach them the mercy of God that they may get that revelation and pray over them that they get, because it only comes by revelation. You can read about it all day, but it comes by, it had to come by revelation to me because my husband was preaching this for 10 years before I got it. I finally got it up in Duell's church. We had a guest speaker that night. We were spending the night with the Duell's and we got to go out with the speaker afterwards and just drill him, pump him dry for answers. Remember? I don't want to say. I'll tell you later. <laughs> He's not doing so good right now. But, but he preached that message, and we all got it. I, Clifton already had it, but I got it. And I've been preaching it ever since. <clears throat> Bonnie wanted me to talk a minute about our ministry. I'm going to read this scripture first, though. This one is good for offering. Grace. Oh, no. God. <laughs> He's grace. God is, may, is more than ready. More than ready. Soak this in. To overwhelm you with every form of grace so that you will have more than enough. Let's say it. More than enough. More than enough of everything every moment and in every way. He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. Tamara knows that by heart. Isn't that great? So, um, oh, I'm sorry. It's in Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 9.8. I love that scripture. So just briefly, um, when my husband passed away on November 11th, I had something to think about. I mean, I couldn't just grieve because we pastor a church. So I prayed and about what to do. And on Sunday morning, I was able... God made me able to get up in front of the church because they were shattered. And it was like, and I've had this happen two or three times, but it was like that I was standing beside myself because in myself I wanted to cry and run. But it was like I was standing over here and a new self was here with the confidence of the Holy Spirit. And I just confidently, because of him, not because of me at all, but I confidently let them know that we would go forward. I said, everybody say Pastor Jerry, and they did. You have a pastor. You are not without a pastor. My two children stepped up who are anointed and ordained, and they helped me, and that's what we do. But I wanted to just tell you something, and it goes along with giving because We've always been givers. Clifton's very generous, too generous. He didn't have to look at the checkbook, though. <laughs> He'd tell me what he wanted to give. I said, honey. He said, do it. And always. You know, we never bounced a check on giving to the Lord. <laughs> and um, so we have given for 45 years. And uh, we had a, a, we bought a building and it needed a lot of work in the back. Part of his vision, Ed knows, Sam knows, they came and helped one time. But we, he had a vision of people in the church. That was our first vision. People in the church. People coming in. As we went out, we went out and got them. It's not like we just sat and prayed, oh, send people to my church. No. Clifton was in real king every day with his popcorn, going around Rural King. Do you have Rural King out here? Farm store. Farm store. He loved to look around and pick up his feed and stuff. And, and he, you get free popcorn there. So he gets his popcorn. I'm a witness. I mean, I didn't go every day, but I went once in a while. Just talking to people. No matter where he went, he was talking to people about the Lord, trying to get them born again, and then telling them a good church to come to. And we've taught that to our people. So 
Long story, eventually they just began to pour into the church. Their lives began to be changed. We had such wonderful fellowship and getting to know these people. And Clifton said, his last service that he preached, if I died today, I would die a happy man. He said, look at all this. This is, this is my dream. This is my vision. The seat, seats were filling up. And we still had a, he had a vision for the back of the church to be finished. Um, but he didn't mention that that day. But someone in the church knew, and it only takes one person to be obedient to the Father, this is speaking to somebody, to meet every need in a conference, in a meeting, no matter what it is. It takes one person being hear, hearing from God and, and being obedient. One. So one person in our church decided she wanted, you know, Clifton used to say, we've got all the money we need to do everything we need to do. And everybody, yay, yay. And they, what's he talking about? Clifton said, it's in your bank account. <laughs> Everything we need's in your bank account. Yeah. And uh, he'd say also, and I think he got this from Dave, just during offering today, just reach over in your neighbor's pocket and pull it out and just give like you'd really want to. <laughs> so one woman walked into the church and she said, I want the back end, and it's a big area. I want this all finished to finish Clifton's vision. And she gave us a check for a lot of money, <laughs> tens of thousands of dollars, to be able. Thank you. Who said hallelujah? Come on, girl. And so I want to tell you that no matter who is against you, no matter what is happening in your life, be like Paul, be like Jesus, but be like Paul taught here that, you know, they, they didn't stand, but the Lord stood with me. And that's how Clifton and I felt a lot of our ministry. We felt like, well, the Lord stood with us. I mean, we lost a lot. I will never forget, and the Lord reminded me sitting there by Donna. Donna was our first-year student at Karis Bible College, her and her husband. <laughs> but the Lord reminded me of something about Dave and Bonnie that I wanted to share. Um... One time we were, it wasn't a death of a, of a, it wasn't a death of a person, but it was a death to us of something that happened to us. And they called on the phone, both of them. They said, and there was another person involved, but they said, we'll lay our relationship with that person on the line for you. We will go. We will stand with you. I don't know if you remember that. Bonnie's forgotten a lot of good things that I remember. <laughs> I know people that do remember it. So they stand with, and I, Clifton was always one to stand with people. So are you ready to give? Are you ready? Father, we thank you so much that we have the awesome privilege and the opportunity today to give into this ministry that the message of your grace can continue to go forth, that we can take the message of your unconditional love all around the world and that people can know who you really are. And I thank you for each giver today. I just believe, God, that you're going to somehow do a above, above blessing back to them. So we thank you, we praise you, we love you and honor you today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you all. I love you all so much.